where students learn to form ideas and identities. Sometimes, before you find your place in the world, you have to find yourself. St. Louis University. Higher purpose, greater good. Twenty-four twenty, UMass leads at St. Louis. AT and T at the half. Welcome on back to Shea Fitz Arena. Elisa well, Stone, head coach for St. Louis, has had a long and interesting road to get to this point. She has played for a national championship and won Division Three Coach of the Year honors at Route Wisconsin Eau Claire. She's gone to the biggest of dances, the D1 tourney, winning Big Ten Coach of the Year accolades at Wisconsin, and she's been a national TV commentator. But these days, her duties revolve around this Billiken bunch that has never been to the NCAA tournament. What are some of her tales and route to this position? We caught up with her earlier today to learn what makes Lisa Stone tick. My biggest basketball influence probably, well, it first starts with my parents. I mean, they've been supportive of what I've done my entire life. I was a tomboy, which is an old word, but that tells you how old I am. Um, I could run and catch and throw and had to decide what sport to play. The fact that I, I chose basketball and went to the University of Iowa was very, very well coached by a woman named Vivian Stringer who now is at Rutgers, and what Coach Stringer taught me about balance in life, handling adversity, being a defensive-minded coach, doing everything you can to help foster female leadership. That's what I learned most from Coach Stringer. It's a, it's a very big influence. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin, so I had a, a very nice time when I was at Wisconsin. My whole family was there. Uh, my husband and I are both from Madison, and now to come to St. Louis, I'm down here by myself right now. And I'm blessed to have a support system because someone in my family is at every game. Uh, my husband's flying out to Philly this week. My brother and his uh, girlfriend came down tonight to watch the game. Uh, my parents are here often. They know that I can't handle this by myself. So lots of phone calls, but we're making it work. They know that I belong on the sidelines. I'm thrilled to be back on the sidelines. I love coaching. I love being around these young women. And when you can work with 18 to 22 year olds every single day and see the smiles on their face and watch them grow, it's truly amazing. But I couldn't do it without the support of family I have. Having players do something they've never done before, and it, whether it's increasing their range on a jump shot, um, playing team defense, boxing out a six foot five post player when you're five five, um, hanging a banner in this arena that's never been hung before. It, there's so much more than wins and losses, but it's also watching players walk across the stage. Um, nearly every single player that's played for me in 26 years has a college degree. I'm very proud of that fact. And I'm very close to my former players. It means a lot to see them smile and grow and mature and become, as I said, future leaders. Um, and that that's brings the greatest smile on my face is to watch watch them grow and watch them do something they've never done. Well, while Lisa Stone is in her 27th year as a head coach, it's her first year in St. Louis, and she's not just a new face. The entire A10 bountifully populated by some new head coaches and two other first-year head coaches in this league, at least with their respective squads. Julian, what do you take away from that? That's the reality of college basketball, of college sports today, right? You must win now. And if you don't, this very taut window, a change will likely be made. There is a lot of pressure when you are a head coach, no matter where you are, whether you've been there for 25 years or not. You, you're going to go in and out. If you're not winning, you're going to be out and somebody younger is going to come in. So there's a lot of pressure, but you see this in the Atlantic 10 Conference with the new coaches. That's happening everywhere. So it's not just in the A-10. And these coaches are taking on programs with prior recruits and trying to really develop those programs, make them into winners. That Lisa Stone is in the A-10 because she was let go of Wisconsin. That was just two years after she was the Big Ten Coach of the Year. 24-20, your score in the second half when we come back on CBS Sports Network. This has been AT&T at the half. AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. Rethink possible.
Shift Mega Red Omega-3 Krill Oil absorbs faster in your body than fish oil. And you just need one small pill with no fishy smell or aftertaste. Shift Mega Red. And for even more of the better Omega-3 choice, try Mega Red Extra Strength. Research suggests cell health plays a key role throughout our lives. One a day men's 50 plus is a complete multivitamin designed for men's health concerns as we age. It has seven antioxidants to support cell health. One a day men's 50 plus. Maybe, like a lot of people across America, you've been hit by credit card bills, a divorce, or you lost your job. Now the feeling of debt is overwhelming, but we believe everyone deserves a second chance. We're the providers of Care One Debt Relief Services, created by Bernie Dansell on this very idea of second chances after he overcame his own battle with debt. Call our certified personal finance counselors for your free customized plan and start to see your savings in minutes. It's not a loan. It's not bankruptcy. It's debt consolidation with a payment you can afford. We've helped over 5 million people and is the nation's largest brand of debt relief. We stand by our service with a six-month money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to you. Care One helps good people get a second chance. So call us right now for your free customized plan at 1-855-66-HELPS or visit careonehelps.com. Care One, we're in the business of second chances. Attention parents and grandparents of young children. Gerber Life is accepting applications for their affordable grow-up plan. The grow-up plan gives your child $10,000 in whole life insurance protection now, then doubles automatically to $20,000 later at no extra cost. Free information will be sent to parents and grandparents who call now. Help give your child a head start for just pennies a day. Don't wait. Call now for free information. Call 1-800-523-3104. Call now. We look lazy. There's no reason why I'm not crashing to the old board. That's laziness, all right? We don't want to go there. We don't want to talk about being lazy. Fix it, all right? I need you guys to crash. Well, there are the first half statistics for offensive rebounds for UMass. Very effective from the field. In fact, 10 field goals made inside the arc for the minute women all were in the paint. That helps to nullify a poor outside shooting. It day. does, and UMass likes to shoot from the perimeter, but not really shooting that great today. But they are, like you said, capitalizing down low. That will open things up for them in the perimeter, but they've got an element. Jasmine Watson, 10 and 7 for UMass, three blocks. While this Billiken squad led by L'Oreal Jones with five. She plays a two-man game along with Desiree Ball, but Ball shot off, and Jones somehow finds the carry. Ball, the seal, rejected. A fourth block on the day for Jasmine Watson. But you heard Coach Dolly at half telling her girls she felt like they played fairly lazy. You're going to have, you're going to probably see a more aggressive UMass team, especially on the boards this half. Jones flashes to the ball against Tim Billa. Showing off a wide array of post moves, but unable to convert. UMass is led by as many as 11. The Billikens have not known a draw nor an advantage. And if you think about it, these games really do matter. Even though there's a good eight, eight more games in conference, you want to win these games, especially if you're St. Louis and you're at home. Nice dribble drive by Mattal and sets up Watson. Teammates point at one another as they gallop to the other end. That's all off that penetration and pitch game. St. Louis just not rotating properly on deep. Castleman initiating contact. It'll be a foul on Caroline Cloutier. Richard Jr. second. But that's a good way to get the offense rolling by Castleman. Take the ball to the basket. Try to get to the foul line when you're in any kind of a drought. That's how you can kind of get out of that. 76% shooter converts. The production not huge from Castleman, but her head coach calls her an X factor, an energy kid. Doesn't care about accolades. She took the starting lineup spot away from Courtney Webb, the team's top scorer from last year, due to her grit and determination. And there's a lot to be said about that. She's a tough kid. She earned her minutes as a starter. Great movement on the perimeter by UMass, but 
Once again, the three ball not going. That time, the girl they called Tex Emily Vital. And what a lead pass down low. Well, Castleman could not convert. J.C. Bradley led her to water. And free throws will be coming. And nice job by Bradley pushing the ball up the floor a bit. I do like the way St. Louis looks when they do push the ball. They don't do it a whole lot. But when they do, I feel like they really get more in the flow and their team looks a little bit more together. And foul to Cloutier, her third. First free throw good for Castleman. Lisa Stone says that her offense is all about flow. It's about reading, reacting, working as one. It's a lot of motion, a lot of four out. Some pieces, in fact, of what her counterpart at Wisconsin is famous for running, Bo Ryan. And that four out offense and all of that, that she says is all coming from the defense. And she said everybody thinks Bo Ryan is offense. It's his defense that's unbelievable. The two of them are good friends. They, she's been to a lot of his practices, so she's gotten some, some good tips from him. Another three ball miss for the minute women, but somehow the weak side board for Timbilla. Cloutier travels. Lisa Stone said that after Wisconsin upset Indiana, she texted Bo Ryan to congratulate him. And it took about six seconds for her to receive a response. She's like, you got to be kidding me. You just <laughs> beat Indiana. How, how do you have time to text me back? Are you serious? Back? Yeah, no, that's how, I mean, that's how close they were. I mean, he's a great guy, and they talked often. And they share something in common. They both came up through the Division three ranks. Deep three for J.C. Bradley. That looked easy. And St. Louis has its first lead of the night. That's a big three by Bradley. Just a nice stroke. They needed that. They were in kind of a drought offensively. Down the lane, the floater for Henry, no. Saves it to Tabilla. Wide open, Batal. The three-point shot continues to plague UMass. And if I'm St. Louis, I keep letting UMass shoot those threes because maybe off of their last game when they played Temple and they missed, they were only 16%. Maybe they'll continue doing that. They have so far in this game. What a look from Mallory Egger. See that bulky brace she has on her knee. She has bone on bone rubbing going on. The inner workings of her knee. Probably should not be playing, at least by most doctors' advisement. But wants to finish out her career. She's a worker, and Coach Stone calls her the anchor of this team. Bradley. Walks him for rebound. I tell you, though, Bradley heats up. She could really add a lot to this St. Louis team. And between her and then the post players, that's the inside-out game that Coach Stone loves and wants her team to get used to. And you mentioned it before, their motion offense and the four-out, one-in type offense. They're coming along with that, but Coach Stone wants to see it improve. They're still pretty young, and that's a tough thing to do with a young group. Off the head fake, nice extra pass by Mattal to Billa. Use the dribble. Coach Dolly probably not a fan of that, but does spank it in. Devin, yeah, doesn't matter how it looks or how it gets there. If it's going in, I think she'll be all right with it. Well, back and forth these teams go. It had been a game of rather decisive runs. It feels more like a possession by possession battle. And they are a possession loss. Ball loses it in line out of bounds, but J.C. Bradley connecting from NBA range. And the St. Louis Billikens have the lead. If digestive issues are twisting up your life, try Shift Digestive Advantage. Its probiotics survives 10 times better to get where you need it for healthy digestion. Take the Digestive Advantage 14-day challenge with a money-back guarantee. Since footlongs are the limousines of hot dogs, yes. we're celebrating Sonic's four new footlongs limo style. Okay, that's cool. I understand that they're really awesome and worth celebrating, but I wish we were in a limo. We're just sitting in the back of my car with a limo driver in the front. Oh, he's not a limo driver. Well, who is he? I don't know. I thought you knew him. No, I don't know him. Cool. Mystery. Get any of the new footlong quarter pound hot dogs with tots for just $3.99. And try the new sweetheart shake. This is how you Sonic. Take notes on the spot. 
Catch every detail with video zoom. And now, run two apps at the same time, on the same screen. The freedom to do what you want, when you want. Let's go again. With the quad-core powered LG Optimus G. Available on AT&T. What are you doing? Oh, hey. Using night vision goggles to keep an eye on my spicy buffalo wheat thins. Who's gonna take your wheat I don't thins? know. An intruder. The dog. Bigfoot. You get the light. Julianne Bigani, they say basketball is a game of runs. This is rather extreme. <laughs> it's extremely extreme. No pun intended there, but look at this. Four different runs. UMass St. Louis. UMass St. Louis. Right now, St. Louis is on the big run, and, and that's what you get when you get two teams that are kind of matched up extremely well. I think these two teams really do have the same type of talent level, the same type of players, and kind of the same style. It's worth noting. Those runs, that's the scoring in the game. There were no other back and forths. There were a few in what is currently a 20 to 8 St. Louis spurt, but it's been a game of big time runs. There's a quick foul. That's the best basketball, though, when you can go back and forth and you're not sure what's going to happen. Desiree Ball whistled, resets the timer for the minute limit. UMass has had some open looks from three that it's not converted, but at the same time, it's been so successful inside Julianne. There's a push down underneath as Watson got better position on Womack. She picks up her third. Even if you have that open look, isn't it better sometimes to get that touch inside? I think you go with the hot hand. I mean, right now, Jasmine Watson is six for six. Keep getting her the ball as much as possible because when she gets the basketball, she's really difficult to handle down there. St. Louis hasn't proven that they can stay with her. So I think you're right. You play with a hot hand and get her the ball. Even Rashida Timbilla, she's only taken five shots. I think that's not enough for a player like her. She's got to get more looks. Well, they try to lob it down to her, but jumped and batted away by Desiree Ball. Watson, six for six. Her teammates, seven of 29, 24%. And as a team, one of 13 from three. This is the A-10 second best outside shooting team. But you're not always going to shoot well from the perimeter, so it's important you play D and you get the ball inside when you can. They do just that with guard Emily Vital. Am I hearing that from guard Julian Viani? Yeah, I know. I was a shooter. <laughs> but I also had those days that were off. And when I was off from the perimeter, I was taking it to the basket. I was trying to get to the hole. And our coach was yelling for us to get it inside. He didn't like it when we lived and died by the three if we were not hot. So you got to go with what's going for you that day. <laughs> Courtney Webb picks up her second. Do you have any feel for the infancy of the second half? Well, we, this has been a game of runs, like we mentioned. So I'm not really sure what's going to happen. It's kind of difficult to tell with these two teams. But I do think that UMass has come out strong as they did in the first half. So we'll see. I mean, that's tough to tell. Right here, UMass dropping into a zone as well. They went into a zone this half to kind of change things up a bit, try to force St. Louis to make some shots. Ball and air ball. St. Louis needed nearly 10 minutes to get its first field goal made. Lisa Stone survived that. Trying to get through year one with this Billigan club that she has just fallen in love with. And Coach Stone, what she loves so much about this team is as they get the ball inside again to Watson. That's that's what I think they need to do all day. And nobody rotating from the Billikens D. But what Coach Stone has told us before the game was that she inherited a team she did not recruit, but this has been the greatest team ever. Sometimes when a coach inherits a team, kids leave, they transfer. There's a lot of just cancer that can spread in the team because it's they're disgruntled or whatever. She hasn't seen any of that with this team. Good chemistry and it's just love getting back to the basic basics because they're hungry for the fundamentals. She said that in the first year, you have a group you've been handed. This group is so thirsty, though, to learn the game on the 
teacher going into a brand new classroom every day. She just loves that, and her coaching staff is so experienced as well that all of them just, they're sapping in every moment. Point blank, a miss for Eggert. Jones dribbles out. Bradley. Back iron, and Jones accidentally knocks it to the minute women. Towel circles back. Niggling for three, no. See right there, if I'm niggling, I get the ball inside to Watson because Watson was posting up and she had she had an opening. Any chance you have to give her, if she's got a player full behind, you gotta get it into her. Falling away, JC Bradley, a senior out of Florence, Kentucky. She's been a nice spark this half for St. Louis. She's gotta look to be more aggressive and do things like that because she's got some skills on the offensive end. Niggling's three off target. Bradley, the head man, the trailing Webb. Webb's got to take that pull up. She took one dribble in. She had that little chippy shot that was about five feet from the basket. How much can a player's rhythm be disrupted when you're the leading scorer a year ago? You were a regular starter. An injury, a big part of first removing her from the lineup and trying to find that group. Oh, that's tough. I mean, especially when you're out with an injury and you haven't played in a while and you've got to get back and other players have been playing together, your confidence can really be at, at a bottom of or really an all-time lo time low. You've got to kind of climb the ladder back up and realize what kind of player you still are. But when you're also a step slower, that kind of adds, that kind of adds coal to the fire. She's been replaced by Castleman. And some players never get out of that. It becomes a real mental game. Jones foul with eight on the shot clock and free throws coming. Bigling uh, picks up the foul. Four on the minute women. Three on the Billigans. Jones shooting 62% of the line this season converts. Leads the team averaging a dozen per. She gets that point total up to seven thus far on the night. She'll take a breather. Jenna Mueller comes in. Point game here at Chaffetz Arena, St. Louis, Missouri, A-10 women's basketball. UMass admitted women, 3 and 19. They have lost 14 of 15. Only one win on the road and in league all year. St. Louis, 9 and 12, started 0 and 3, played its first four on the road, but has been a solid club since. Has won two of three, both wins on the road. And if you're able to win some games on the road, then Winning at home should be a lot easier. You want to keep winning because you really like to wear the white jerseys from conference play time in the playoffs. That's Ray Ball, the free throw line J. And something St. Louis has not done as an A-10 member, finished in first division in the top half. This is what has become a rather bulky lead. There's a chance to do that. Tonight, we're going to be halfway through the league play and a win. Have the Billikens over 500. Watson misses off play. And on the other side of the coin, UMass, they're just really struggling for wins this year. And they just need one bad. They're hungry. They've got to get another league win. Castleman loses handle. Runs into niggling in the process. But the Billikens are on a 6-0 spurt. They enjoy a three-point lead here at St. Louis. Hey, wake up. Who are you? I'm you, or the you you could be. Just gotta get up, get active. I'm too tired. Then take five hour energy. You'll feel alert and energized for hours. Let's go. Maybe later. You used to look like that. 
Meet the girlfriend you could have. Five Hour Energy. Be the you you could be. Putting members first is who we are. Our member gives a huge part of their life to defend our country. And because those are the people that we serve, we have to put them first. It is because of who we serve that putting members first becomes the, the ethos of this organization. Pizza Hut's $10 Any Pizza deal is back. Any pizza, topping, sizes, 10 bucks. The Meat Lover's Pizza. 10 bucks. Delivery, dine-in, or carry out of this world pizza. Pizza Hut's $10 Any Pizza deal is back. Now that's how you make it great. College basketball offers news, highlights, and analysis of the latest college basketball storylines from across the country. It airs Saturday at midnight Eastern Time right here on CBS Sports Network. Welcome on back. Shane Fitz Arena, St. Louis, Missouri. They call it SLU. The nickname sometimes short from Billigans to Bills. This program trying to build something. Only one postseason appearance in the history of Billiken women's basketball. That was the WNIT. A new head coach, Lisa Stone, has her team at 500 in the league. And up three on the visiting UMass minute women. John Sadak and former Marist star Julianne Viani courtside. Minute women riding a great night from Jasmine Watson. Aisha Rodney gets two looks. That's something that her head coach, Sharon Dawley, really harped upon at halftime. Yeah, she really needs to score and step up, and that's a nice penetration by Nola Henry, getting her teammates involved. And most importantly, getting that offensive rebound, that second chance. That's too easy. Valerie Egger. That's way too easy. You've got to rotate there and not allow her to get such an easy putback. Midway point of this second stanza. Spreading the floor noticeably. Henry loading up. Another missed UMass three. Minute women now one of 17 from outside, and yet they're within three. They are, they're within three, but I, if I'm them, I'm not taking so many of those low baskets from the perimeter. You want to you wanna shoot from the paint where they've been doing well. Right now, St. Louis in the paint, 26 to 14. So you just keep trying to get the ball inside. Higher percentage shots if you're not hitting from the three. 28 of those points in the paint, three at the stripe, and the one triple name. Jones, hopping in the lane. No friendly roll on the home iron. Rather herky jerky night. UMass galloped out to an 11 point lead early. St. Louis knifes back. But finally, they start getting the ball back down low to Jasmine Watson, who's been the game's most imposing force. Yeah, you've got to get her the ball. I mean, she makes moves down there. Nobody's double teaming her. She can make moves. Desiree Ball. Held the two points, doubled it up. It was the team's second leading score. Three-point game. Quick move off the bounce. She needs to do a little bit more of that. Caught UMass kind of sleeping defensively and not rotating. Wide open behind a double screen, Jasmine Harrison. That's one of my favorite plays, the double stagger screen. But not able to capitalize those. Those plays for three-pointers are, are great plays when you're hot. And one, Mallory Egger.
Eggert's really added a nice spark to the squad. She's posting up hard back to the basket. Nice drop step to the right. Good court vision. This is a good entry pass up high where the target is. Gibbs Watson, her second foul. Eggert converts on the three-point play. She's a physical therapy major. Perhaps some irony since she sees so much of it with that bone on bone rubbing underneath that brace. She's class every day from eight to five. And so they've accommodated practice. For her. Yeah, and Coach Stone really tries to limit her to 24 minutes or less because she can't handle too much more of that. And she's a hustler, though. She really, I love the way she's out there just bringing that energy. Jasmine Watson turns aside Denisha Womack sends us to a timeout. Billikens though starting to feel it at home. A 42-36 lead. ran a marathon because it was on his way. Sasquatch has taken a photograph of him. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I prefer the Zakis. Stay thirsty, my friends. If digestive issues are twisting up your life, try Shift Digestive Advantage. Its probiotics survives 10 times better to get where you need it for a healthy digestion. Take the Digestive Advantage 14-day challenge with a money-back guarantee. steak burrito thick cut marinated steak swaddled in a warm flour tortilla it's the big daddy of all burritos baby, baby. outside of Chaffetz arena sits a billiken the billiken was born in october 1908 a kansas city art teacher and illustrator florence Bretz patented a design for an elf-like creature with pixie ears a mischievous smile and a tuft of hair on his pointed head reportedly that image came to her in a dream before Cabbage Patch Kids, before Beanie Babies. It was the Billiken. That was the craze that swept the nation. The Billiken is said to be good luck. There are different kinds of luck. Buying a Billiken gives the buyer luck. To have one given to you is better. The best of luck, though, comes if the Billiken is stolen. And we, <laughs> we talked to Coach Stone about that. We said, does everybody know what a Billiken is? Did you know what a Billiken is? And she said, well, of course I did my research, my research and everything. But some of the players that they recruit don't know what a Billiken is, and they've got to explain it to them. People in this area know, but it's just an interesting mascot. Oriel Jones, the banker. Now, Lisa Stone said that the first time she ever heard of the Billiken was when she was here with, with Wisconsin. And she took a jog around campus and saw that exact statue and was baffled by it. And then began her inquiry and found out some of the lore that makes up the Billiken. Her Billiken squad enjoying an eight point lead. Yes. They were down at one point by 11. St. Louis really moving the ball a lot better, taking good shots in the paint. Just, they've got the momentum right now. UMass has to really get a stop here. Oh, what a good look. The point blank effort not there, but it resets the timer. And second chance for L'Oreal Jones. Ball short. That's unfortunate because it's good penetration and pitch. Three ball. Finally, the second made three of the game. This one courtesy of Jasmine Harris. 
one thing we'd like to point out, lower right portion of your screen, just under the six minutes and one second remaining, is a possession arrow graphic. And there's a true innovation from the folks here at CBS Sports Network. Let's you know who has the arrow right there on your screen. UMass has a foul as Venetia Womack got hacked off the block. What do you think of the possession arrow, Julianne? Uh, I think it's helpful. I think people watching can see which gate, which way it's going. It's a really interesting thing to add. Something that obviously has never, never been done. So I think it's great. Now the arrow, you might wonder, does it point to the team in terms of the graphic? You mass on the left, St. Louis on the right. No. As you watch the flow of the game, it points in the direction the team is going. So since UMass is shooting in the basket to our right, the arrow right now favors the minute women. And especially it helps us down at the end of the game when you want to know who gets the ball. It's, it's great to have that possession arrow there that tells you, all right, they're going to have the ball next or they're going to have the ball next. So I think it's huge. It's exactly the same as you would see on the scorer's table right across from our broadcast position. Jasmine Watson, foul. Shockingly, Julianne, they go to Watson and attack as soon as Eggert, who has the more profound size and has been able to push Watson away from the block, returns. Well, it, it almost seems a little counterintuitive. It does, but the thing that Watson does well, I think she's a little bit quicker than Eggert, so she lights up a little bit when Eggert's on her because she can kind of actually face up and take it. You saw her right there, that last play. She faced up and took it off the dribble against Eggert. It's so only Eggert's first foul. That's the versatility, though, that Watson has. She's not a plotting post. She's one of those tweener bigs that can run the floor, can pass. Yeah, she passes well out of double teams, and she can post up. And she doesn't just have one move, either. When she posts up, she makes multiple moves, and so she's quick. So you get a player like Eggert on her, and she's able to make some, some noise down low. UMass trying to double. But now the ball movement by St. Louis creates a free shot and a three ball for Courtney Webb. And St. Louis is pretty good at taking care of the basketball and out of the double team, they can find the open player and nail the shot. So UMass calls timeout. That means a timeout on the floor. St. Louis up 48-41. The three ball connected by Courtney Webb. Shift Mega Red Omega-3 Krill Oil absorbs faster in your body than fish oil. And you just need one small pill with no fishy smell or aftertaste. Shift Mega Red. And for even more of the better Omega-3 choice, try Mega Red Extra Strength. Freedom to do what you want, when you want. Let's go again. With the quad-core powered LG Optimus G. Available on AT&T. CBS Sports Network, St. Joe's Hawks taking on the Temple Owls. Julianne and I will be on site. That comes your way Sunday, 2 o'clock Eastern time, February the 17th. That's the first of two games in two days. We'll go right from Philadelphia out to Dayton, Ohio, for perhaps the premier game in the league, Duquesne at 
Dayton is one of the top squads in the A-10, but don't count out those Hawks either, Julianne. Even though Dayton's the dominant team, it feels more and more like this league is a little more open than we thought. It is. I think anything can happen on any given day, and I think that's what's so fun about this conference. It's the BCS feel that you get in this conference. Dayton defeated Xavier by only 10. The margins have slimmed for the Flyers of late. There's another three ball, this time by Cloutier. The UMass squad has really struggled from being two of 20. Now down nine with still so much time to go, Julianne. Surprised they keep taking those triples. Yeah, that's the thing that has really hurt them is the fact that they haven't been able to capitalize on the triples. At this point in the game, you stop taking them. Go down low. They do to Watson, but Eggert gives no ground, and the fade falls short. I'm not saying not to take them. You want to take shots when you're open, but it's important to be really careful about shot selection and knowing when you're hot and when you're not. Well, I think that's exactly it, right? When your entire team has been this stone cold over a span of two games now. It goes back to the Temple loss as well. And you have one post player that's been that dominant. You have to at least look, try to get the ball into that post. St. Louis calls timeout with one second on the shot clock. Yeah, because teams are covering UMass for the perimeter shot. So therefore, get it inside, and then it'll open it up a little bit more for them on the perimeter. They'll get a little bit cleaner shots, a little more open. But you don't want to live and die by that three because it's just too dangerous to do that. Second time tonight that St. Louis has had to inbound with one second on the shot clock. Last time around, it was a quick release from three. What are you looking for here? Well, I said it before. I thought that maybe go with a big lob down low, but I, that's what I would do is we used to have a play where it was literally we would rub our nose and called it, you know, nose. And that was symbolic of just basically the inbounder chucks it high in the air, hopes the big girl gets it, puts it back up. Anybody ever have an itchy nose and call it <laughs> accidentally? No, actually, that never did happen. That's, that's what I would do here. Throw it up high to Eckert, and that's what they tried to do. Well, the horn sounds as they put the second off the shot clock, but they'll talk it over and I believe add some time back on. UMass led 20 to 9 with four and a half minutes to go in the first half. Since then, St. Louis has outscored the minute women by 20, 41-21. And they'll say no, they'll confirm a shot clock violation. And with that, a timeout on the floor. Three minutes, 45 seconds remaining. St. Louis leads by nine, but the turnover gives the minute women the ball. If digestive issues are twisting up your life, try Shift Digestive Advantage. Its probiotics survives 10 times better to get where you need it for healthy digestion. Take the Digestive Advantage 14-day challenge with a money-back guarantee. Let's pinch our dreams. Let's wake them up. Make them real. Let's not let anything hold us back. Not even 292,000 pounds. Let's keep our head in the star, our feet on the ground, and nothing will be beyond our reach. Toyota, let's go places. Since footlongs are the limousines of hot dogs, yes. we're celebrating Sonic's four new footlongs limo style. Okay, that's cool. I understand that they're really awesome and worth celebrating, but I wish we were in a limo. We're just sitting in the back of my car with a limo driver in the front. Oh, he's not a limo driver. Well, who is he? I don't know. I thought you knew him. No, we don't know him. Cool. Mystery. Get any of the new foot-long quarter-pound hot dogs with tots for just $3.99. And try the new sweetheart shake. This is at Sonic. What are you doing? Oh, hey. Using night vision goggles to keep an eye on my spicy buffalo wheat thins. Who's going to take your wheat I don't thins? know. An intruder. The dog. Bigfoot. You get the light. <laughs> St. Louis has trailed this game by as many as 11, but a 41-21 extended spurt as the Billikens up nine. It is UMass ball. The visiting minute women have the arrow, three timeouts, same number of TOs remaining for Lisa Stone and company. Bonus time is just around the corner with six fouls on UMass. 
four on St. Louis. John Sadak, Julianne Biani, former Marist star, courtside. Chaffetz Arena in St. Louis. Committed women enter at 3-19. and 19. Just one win in league, just one on the road. And turnovers that have plagued the minute women all year. Stall this possession nearly immediately. And those are some purse lifts from Sharon Dolly. And this is one of the things Coach Dolly was afraid of and what she talked about before the game is they're not able to finish 40 minutes. They were ahead for much of the game, but they have not been able to just finish games. St. Louis unit has been resilient all year. Off the double and the contact. Jones the dish, Bradley the bucket. And that's great court vision by Jones off the double team. When players come at her, that's what makes her tough. She can see out of it. First double digit lead of the game for the Billikens. And a foul on the floor as Bradley defended the longer Cloutier. But Bradley's been quite the spark today. She's making baskets and she just looks very confident out there, and I just like the way she's been playing. That's her first, team's fifth, three minutes to go. With a sense of urgency, in a series of spins, the towel lays it home. There's some aggressive pressure. The thing that's hard to do against St. Louis is put up that pressure because they take care of the ball very well. And on cue, the good old broadcaster well, jinx. There we go. <laughs> Zimbella, nearly the chance for the end one, but could not convert. Normally, they take care of the ball well, but not <laughs> that time. <laughs> well, the foul to L'Oreal Jones, she now has three, so each team is one away from bonus. And it's free throw time for these minute women. Zimbella, though, just a 53% free throw shooter. And that's something you gotta really get in the gym and work on because free throws can just make or break a game. Second shot goes. And here's the pressure again. Castleman is in along with Bradley. Desiree balled in as well. A double on the end line and a timeout called by St. Louis. So the Billikens have two remaining. Well, St. Louis needs to try to send someone in the middle of that zone pressure. Nobody's flying in the middle. It's a little bit tough to break it. It's worth noting that in the history of the St. Louis women's basketball program, no head coach had prior Division I head coaching experience. Until that one, Lisa Stone, this is her 27th year as a head coach, and she's part of an incredibly experienced staff. Of her assistants, associate head coach Barb Smith, who walked down to Ohio State. She's been a head coach at Minnesota, San Diego State. Amy Stevens replaced Lisa Stone at Drake when she took the Wisconsin job and recently defected from Drake to join this staff. Nearly 50 years of head coaching experience at the Division I level between that threesome. And they said they just have a blast just throwing ideas all over the place. She said it's just, well, all three of them said it's just imagination all over the place. They have so much experience. From joy to despair, St. Louis thought a foul came on that entry. Instead, steps and a turnover. Watson lays it home. She's got her third double-double of the year. Make it a 20 and 10 night. Good job finding Watson out of the out of bounds play. A good target. The pressure all over, end to end. Another turnover. And this pressure by UMass is showing a lot right now. It's something they maybe should have done throughout the game. St. Louis really struggling to get out of it. Out of the corner, Jasmine Harris rains it down. Three point game, time. St. Louis. And so the homestanding Billikens have just one left. And UMass just coming back. That was a great lob to their best player in Watson down low. And then what penetration and pitch this is right here by Emily Mittal to pop it out for the three. And that's something they have not been able to 
to make the entire game, and when it counts, they hit it. Jasmine Harris comes from a pedigree. Her dad, Hiram, was an All-State basketball star in her hometown of Farmington Hills, Michigan. Later played at Louisiana Tech with the mailman, Carl Malone, went to the Sweet 16 back in the 80s. But for St. Louis, five possessions, four turnovers, one field goal. The run has come. Huge credit to UMass with their pressure. They really just sent a double T in the corners of the court where it's difficult to get a player open out of those traps. One timeout, clinging to now a three-point edge. Desiree Ball, five to shoot. Jones, falling away, fouled, and hits the shot. Are you kidding me, L'Oreal Jones? And this is just not something that you want to do. You don't want to foul a player falling away like this, but a good move by L'Oreal Jones just creates her space. And Tim Villa did not think she touched her. Zimbilla has three. UMass calls timeout. That is such a sigh of relief bucket for Billiken fan. But Julianne, there's still a ton of time left in this game. These minute women have the arrow in their favor. Down five and overall a lot of both. If St. Louis makes this free throw, it's only a two possession ball game. And you're right, there's a lot of time left but that was a big bucket there to get an and one on it. L'Oreal Jones now has her fourth double-double of the year. She has 11 and 11. She's improved her outside shot, but it's been more of her interior play of late. It's not been a great shooting day, just four of 13 from the field, but several of those buckets have come in more recent time. And now it's up to the 62% free throw shooter to try to make it a full two possession game. No go, and Jazz Watson for the rebound. Quick launch from three, no. Tim Villa, weak side, forces against the grain of the lane, pays the price. And good hustle by Jones again. You see her all over the floor right now. And it's now bonus time for free throws. Jones was shoved. Jasmine Harris picks up the foul. That's her first. Eight fouls on the minute women. And a timeout called by the minute women. Sharon Dawley has seen this before. You mentioned it earlier, Julianne. The inability to finish has plagued this 3 and 19 club. It's going to be important that they stay composed here. They don't get all flustered and frazzled, and that's where it's hard when you've got a lot of young players out there. And we did ask her a little bit about the number of freshmen that she has and, you know, the, the process of rebuilding a team. And she said, no, you know, when you're rebuilding a team, she said, I came here for that. You've got to throw out the numbers game. Rebuilding is its own thing, is what she said, and eventually things will settle down. Well, tonight marks the halfway point of league play. What's up ahead for these respective squads? Lisa Stone and her St. Louis Billikens trek to Philadelphia. Five days stay. They'll play at Temple at LaSalle, which just lost Brittany Wilson, top scorer, the Northeastern transfer. First of the one and one, good for L'Oreal Jones. St. Louis with a win tonight would have a winning record in league play at the midway point for the third time as an A-10 squad. And that's the one thing that St. Louis really does well is they, they just play extremely hard. Coach Dolly talked about that with us before the game. She said, the thing about Lisa Stone is wherever she coaches, doesn't matter the personnel, they play the same. They play so hard. So she gets them playing hard. Big foul, L'Oreal Jones, her fourth. Lisa Stone disagrees. I think the St. Louis club, though, has even more optimistic eyes due to the schedule. 
when they played a more front-loaded schedule, the two prior times they had winning records at the midway point of lead play, the schedule was tilted in the opposite direction, backloaded with Xavier in its heyday at GW. Not to say there are gimmies on the remaining schedule, but certainly far easier than the games already played. Yeah, a little bit more balanced and kind of get the tougher games kind of out of the way. Under a minute. Six point game. And that's kind of a positive thing they can look to is they've got a slew of winnable games coming up for them. Eggert trying to post. Jones barely holds her pivot. Bradley was open, but wisely works more seconds off the clock. Floats it up. Rejected out of bounds. Three to shoot. St. Louis has been in this position numerous times tonight. Inbound on the wing. Desiree Ball near the horn. Yes! The dagger. Well, that's a nice pull it short shot. Off the dribble. I love that move. A turn over the other end. A frustration foul from Jasmine Watson. But at this point, it's likely window dressing, barring some horrific free throw shooting down the stretch. Desiree Ball off of this nice penetration. Quick first step, stops short, pulls it up. I love it. The mid range jumper. It's only your third field goal make of the night, but that's a pretty big one. She had 22 in the win over Xavier. It's UMass calls timeout. And that's a pretty big time move. That move is difficult to stop because when you pull up like that, you basically the player that you're that's covering you just kind of lays off. They don't expect you to pull up. They think you're going the whole way. Well, clutch is a big part of her pedigree. She hit the winner with a second left in overtime against Charlotte last year. And her dad, Eric, certainly made some hay. He's now an employee of the Cincinnati Bengals, spent seven years in the NFL playing with the Bengals and the Raiders. But perhaps his greatest notoriety athletically comes from his college days. He was at UCLA and was the Rose Bowl MVP in 1986. He tied the Rose Bowl record with four touchdowns in a win over Iowa, and that broke the heart of a young head coach named Lisa Stone, who was the youngest head coach in the country at Cornell College, an Iowa graduate, still coaching out there in the state of Iowa. Now he's coaching that guy's daughter. It's unbelievable irony. I mean, it's a small world in, in the world of athletics. And he certainly made a tough, a tough nut of a kid because she played this year with the flu. She called coach, don't worry, I'll be fine. She played sicker than dog. I mean, she's, she's really tough. You want a player like that any day. We asked Lisa Stone if she knew that wrinkle about Desiree's dad beating her beloved Iowa Hawkeyes, and she had no idea. She burst into near hysterics <laughs> yeah, and funny. asked Desiree if she knew, and uh, Desiree with a smile on her face said, yeah. Of course I knew, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Stacy Bradley at the stripe. It's one of two. No time for these minute women. They must get off shots. Lutier. Working a lot of clock now going to the cup. St. Louis the rebound. No reason to foul at this stage. After that very pedestrian possession. And St. Louis calls timeout before the ball was ripped free as Haley Castleman got tripped up. So 5.6 seconds. These teams have exhausted their timeouts. What are you taking away from this game? Well, right now. If I'm UMass, I'm, I'm not too pleased with the fact that we didn't finish out the ball game. It's disheartening for them because they were winning a whole lot of this game. But St. Louis, I just tip my cap to them. I mean, I think they came out in the second half and they just played solid. They played hard. They controlled the tempo, especially in the second half. And I mean, both of these are good teams. They just struggling to finish games on the UMass end. Here's what's coming up for the Minute Women who are on their way to their 15th loss in 16 games. They go to Rhode Island and journey down to Richmond, home against two really good teams back-to-back, -back, Charlotte and Duquesne. They're two of the top contenders to try to knock off Dayton. And they've got a tough schedule coming up. And while this St. Louis unit trying to have a winning mark at the midway point, of its conference schedule for the first time since 08-09.
And what this game really shows me about St. Louis is they're gritty. I mean, they play hard. They might not have the enormous amount of talent that maybe Charlotte has, but they're tough. They play really hard. Seconds tick away. Haley Castleman, the effort kid that exemplifies grit, gets to dribble it out. As St. Louis dispatches of UMass, the Billikens have a winning record in the A-10. They have won three of four, while the men and women fall to three and 20. And have lost 15 of 16. St. Louis did not hit a field goal for nearly 10 minutes to open the game. Rally from down 11 and wins it comfortably. We'll take a break. We'll be back to wrap it up. 59-50. Billikens win.